Yep. I'm now a cripple. So yeah, I've just had surgery on my ACL and my knee. I first injured it about three years ago. I was playing football. Um, I was running real fast, just boosting, sprinting hard out. Cleared the ball out, planted my left leg. So like there, I'm, yeah, I'm running, leg planted. The ground was like really, really hard. The rest of my body kept twisting while the sprigs in my boot stuck to the ground. Bang, just a big crack and um, yeah ruptured my ACL. Now nah, it was a bit rough, pretty painful, probably the most pain I've ever felt in my life. And yeah, after that, I did have a surgery then. That ended up failing as a hamstring tendon surgery. That's what they use for the graft to make the new ACL. So yeah, that failed. So here we are, surgery round two. This time they used my patella tendon. So what they did was cut a bit of the bone on the femur, I think it is. Pulled the middle strip out of the patella um, and then, oh yeah, cut a little, another bit of bone out of the tibia. Is that supposed to be a more painful method? I haven't really felt too much pain with it, but it has been pretty stiff and swollen. So yeah, today I just wanted to watch a video on each different surgery style and how it's performed. See the differences between the two? Don't worry, I'm going to be watching an innovated. What? What the fuck? An innovated, an innovated, an innovated, an innovated. Hi there. Hi. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good. I'm not retarded. You don't have to talk like that. I'm illiterate and I'm here oh. to spread awareness. LOL. Don't worry. I'm going to be watching an animated um, version. Not the full gory sort of stuff. I think I'll give that a miss for today. I, I don't know whether I want to see the inside of my knee. We'll get into it now, eh? So yeah, I found this video. Um, it's more showing how an ACL injury actually occurs. It would be pretty similar to what I already described just before, but um, pictures. We'll have some pictures and videos to to see along with it. Doesn't actually have sound though, but yeah. Jack is running along. Yeah, that's basically what happened. See, that's basically what happened. My planted foot and the rest of my body just twisted, eh? Just psh, and then pop. And you could hear the pop. Apparently, although I think that was just the bone smashing down on top of the other bone, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Either way, it was bloody sore. Yes, yeah, so we got this joker. He's running along here. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah. Yeah, planting foot and twisting body. And yeah, snap. Yeah, that's what happened to me. Twice. Yeah, I didn't have no golf cart though. I didn't get a golf cart to take me off. All right, so that's the first one there. That's how the injury actually happened. So now I'm just going to get into the reconstruction video of the hamstring tendon being used as a graft. Here we go. Years ago, a torn ACL was a career-ending injury for an elite athlete. With advances in technology. Yeah, basically you just can't do anything, honestly. Any sort of you can do straightforward motions, up and down motions, any sort of twist, you are stuffed. Like you really can't do it. He said career ending in injury in terms of sports. I think it could have been if we're going way, way back, like way back, could have even been like maybe a life injury. I don't know, it depends who, whether you've got a good gang around you. Because I can't see people back in the old hunter-gatherer days. Once you fuck your leg like that, it's just... Nah. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. It would be tough anyway. Surgical procedures and rehabilitation, however, an elite athlete now has an excellent chance of returning to high-quality sports participation. To keep the joint stable, a set of four ligaments keeps the knee in a hinge-like position while you move. Two ligaments on either side of your knee joint, the medial and lateral collateral ligaments, connect to either side of your femur and tibia and limit shifting movement left or right. Mm, that grinding motion, that just, uh, I don't know, that's why I think the knee's one of the worst joints really, because eh? it's carrying all that weight and it's just got little fucking, just little worm looking things, little slugs holding your bones together. The other two ligaments, the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments, connect from the base of your femur to the top of your tibia. 
they cross each other and prevent the knee from excessive forward and backward movement, as well as twisting mm. movement in either direction. If a movement is forceful enough, any of these ligaments may snap, including the ACL. Once torn, the ACL cannot regenerate or repair itself. Yeah, pretty much. It's just surgery or nothing. Yeah, I mean, you can still live a functional life. I suppose there's just a lot of stuff that you won't be able to do anymore. Anything sport-related is just... Yeah, nah, big no-no. He can't. No chance, really. The ACL reconstruction operation is now typically a one-hour outpatient procedure, performed successfully more than one way. We'll examine one of the more common methods used in ACL reconstruction. The entire surgery is completed through just a few tiny incisions. One is made for the insertion of a tiny camera and to deliver fluid. The old keyhole, those cameras, man. It must be pretty good. But to establish a clear view of your joint. One or two additional incisions are made on either side of your kneecap to give the surgeon access to your joint. One very small incision is made to anchor the new grafted ACL in place. To start the procedure, the surgeon will insert a probe to inspect the damaged joint. A small motorized shaver will then be used to remove the damaged ACL and prepare the area. We're not waxing our tibias. Just shaving. For the new one. In every case, a surgeon will also inspect the entire joint to determine whether there is additional damage warranting other repairs. Then, the surgeon will use a device called a retro flip cutter to create a tunnel through the femur and into the knee joint. Yep. The surgeon will also create a tunnel Straight through the tibia the and into the knee joint from below. These two tunnels become the source of the anchor points for the ACL graft. In most cases, the surgeon will harvest a portion of your own hamstring tendon to use as the graft. Using your own tissue reduces the likelihood of your ACL rupturing again and is a reason some surgeons decide not to use a tendon harvested from a cadaver. A sur yeah, I don't know whether I would want to use someone else's tendon, eh? I'm not sure. Ugh. Uh, yeah, nah, a cadaver tendon, nah, I'll, I'll just use my own. We'll harvest more hamstring than needed to avoid the challenge of not harvesting enough. To the patient's benefit, hamstring tendons consistently regenerate over time as well. Yeah, so there you go. They come back. I mean, it'll be a bit sore and a bit weaker for a while, but it'll come back. Your surgeon will prepare the harvested hamstring and pull it through the upper hole and into the lower hole just taut enough to mimic your original ACL. A small grappling hook will anchor the upper end of the graft, and a screw will stabilize the lower end. The screw is usually bioabsorbable, meaning your body will incorporate it into the bone over time. Yeah, it's cool, eh? Yeah, so it just basically turns into bone. The graft from your hamstring tendon will act as a scaffold upon which a new ACL will grow. Over time, the hamstring graft undergoes changes and is strengthened, leaving a strong, viable ACL. So yeah, that's that. That's the um, hamstring tendon one. Pretty interesting how far these surgeons can come now, eh? Like, pretty cool. I'm definitely happy that it's come this far, so that I can get myself fixed and right again. I got distracted last night, that's why it's change your shirt. I was planning to do it back to back. Yeah, something come up and I had to go, and then I couldn't get back to it. So yeah, that's why there's a change your shirt. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this video off now. Sweet, let's, let's get into it. After the anesthesia is given, a tourniquet or blood pressure cuff is wrapped around the thigh to temporarily stop the flow of blood to the knee. This allows the doctor to see the surgical area clearly. To help reduce the chance of infection, the area will be scrubbed with a special soap and will be covered with sterile sheets. The only area exposed will be the site where the procedure is being performed. The doctor will begin the... Yeah, I woke up. It's like, sort of like an iodine sort of soap, I think. Yeah, all like iodine color all around the knee and that. ...surgery by making three small incisions about a quarter inch in length. One is located above the kneecap so, and the other two... So it's kind of similar like before. ...are below. 
The knee is then filled with fluid to expand the joint so that the doctor can see better inside. Through one of the incisions, the arthroscope is then inserted. The arthroscope is long and thin, about the size of a writing pen. It acts as a camera that projects an image onto a TV monitor so the doctor can see inside the knee. It's a pretty similar so far. It can also take pictures and videotape the procedure. Once the arthroscope is in the correct position, the doctor will begin to examine the structures of the knee on a video monitor, looking for any damage to the menisci or articular cartilage. If an injury is seen, the doctor will treat it at that time. When the cartilage work is done, the doctor will then proceed with the ACL reconstruction. The doctor will first I don't think I had any cartilage work done on me. remove the torn ends of the ACL. It will then be replaced with an ACL graft from your patellar tendon. To do this, another, be different. another incision is made in the front of the knee, and one-third of the patellar tendon, with a piece of bone attached to either end, is removed. Yeah, that's why it's supposed to be more painful, I guess. The other one, there's no bone. There's no bone sores. You're not hacking away at the meat. Hacking away. Because this graft is taken from the middle of the patellar tendon, the tendon is reattached with stitches that the body will absorb over time. There are no long-term defects after taking the graft from this location. So I guess it, those stitches just become one with you and you just regrow it. A tunnel where the graft will eventually go is created starting in the shin bone, through the knee, and into the thigh bone. The graft is then placed into more bone drilling to the tunnel and usually secured into place with two screws, one in the thigh bone and the other in the shin bone. After the doctor has completed the work within the knee, all of the instruments will be removed Hopefully. and the fluid will be drained. The skin incisions will be closed using stitches and a sterile bandage will be applied. A hinged knee brace may be placed to lock the knee in a straight position. No, I didn't get that. Maybe that's for heavier people and there's a lot more weight coming down on the joint. Ah, oh, well that's that. We did. So yeah, I guess that's a bit more insight into my surgery that I had. Yeah, it's pretty interesting what modern medicine can do these days. Those videos are a bit low quality, eh? I'm, mm, I'm contemplating whether I go for the gory ones or not. See like the real life thing. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I might I might talk myself into it. Anyway, that's it for, for today's video, I suppose. Drop a like, subscribe, comment, do whatever it is that you do. Yeah, anyway, catch you next time.